Hello everyone, uh, this is just a short uh, video uh, instruction, instructional video that's going to demonstrate uh, how to get signed into to Desmos and uh, create a, a, a trigonometric function and apply some four of our transformations that we've been playing around with in, in class starting in grade 11 and using them in grade 12 um, when we've graphed uh, the trig functions. So here we go. What I'd like you guys to make sure you do is first of all get into Desmos. We've all been uh, on this great uh, app and this great site and we've set up some basic graphs. Let me just put this off to the side here. So get into Desmos and if you have not uh, created your own Desmos account, I want you to do that. I'm going to sign into my account and students should really consider creating their own Desmos account, keeping their Desmos graphs in their account folder and sharing them with each other, building your inventory of graphs and functions and making sure that you really know how to work with this and, and, and get this. Okay, so first up we're going to graph a trig function and we've been graphing and talking about trig functions in class. One of the very first things we do is we want to set our axes in our graph settings to, to radian degrees. We can do that by graph settings. Let's check then the x-axis. We can easily type in our lower interval and write in on the keyboard 2, negative 2 pi pi and Desmos picks it up automatically and really nicely and identifies that as negative 2 pi radians. Let's then do our upper boundary at negative or sorry positive 2 pi and my step factor is going to be pi over 6, what we commonly use in class. My y-axis, I'm going to go, let's go down negative 2, let's go up 4, and let's go step by 1. And if I click off of this, and I see right away that I've got a nice set axes in, in terms of radians, just like we're used to when we graph in Desmos. Okay, next up. Let's start with our basic trig function. Now, I'm not going to use, I'm, I'm going to continue to use f at x, so functional notation, but I want to okay, use theta here for my known and get in the habit of, of properly writing a, a function of notation uh, with, with radian graph here. Desmos allows us to do that really nicely and very, very quickly. If that theta was on your keyboard, I, maybe I did that a little quick. It's right here. So open up your keyboard in, in Desmos, click on the, the keyboard tab, the theta is over on this side. Okay, good, perfect. This is a graph we've seen. Desmos handles it really, really nicely, and we get a pretty good idea of what this trig basic trigonometric function looks like. We can substitute sine, but we can put in cosine here if you like. And we see our cosine curve, and we can nicely and very easily even put in tan and recognize that that's our tan function. All good so far? I'm going to go back to sign and deal with this function and talk a little bit about this function. Now, back in grade 11, we talked about transformations and transformations. The grade 11 functions we talked about didn't really include transformations on sine functions. We talked a little bit about that, but mostly it was left for, for this class and the grade 12 advanced functions class. And I want to do it in Desmos and show you guys exactly how we can apply these transformations really very, very nicely. Actually see the full visually transformations and how they really look nice in concentric functions. Sometimes back in grade 10 and grade 11, they're harder to see with if, if the function's quadratics, but not, not, not now, not with trigonometric functions, certainly not when we use Desmos for it. Okay, so the first transformation is our scale factor of A in front of this. 
Now, this is how Desmos hand handles transformations. As soon as you put in A in front of the sine theta function, you're going to be asked if you want to add a thing called a slider, and we want to click on that A button right here. Okay. This is what appears on your Desmos graph, and it, the slider allows us to change the value of that variable and graph multiple functions. So if I slide the slider along, I see exactly what I know should happen, this transformation. I'm adjusting A, just moving it up and down the slider. If I stop at 3, I can see that my transformation has just pulled that or vertically stretched that function up to an amplitude of 3. Drop it down, okay, negative, reflex it, negative 2. Just all the things we're used to seeing, but so nice and clear, clearly shown in Desmos. Now, one thing you want to do with sliders is maybe possibly adjust the, the slider boundaries and certainly maybe adjust our step function here. Notice as I'm moving this along, I'm going up by increments of, of 0.1, right? I can quickly adjust that, much like my graph settings over here, by clicking on just one of the one of the areas on my slider and let's go let's go at down a negative two. Okay, let, let, let's adjust my A boundaries. Let's go up to about five and let's go on a step of the one. Okay, so click off of this. Now I can adjust a little bit nicer here. So I'm going in a whole number increments along this A slider, this A transformation. So next up would be two. Notice on my graph, I'm just pulling this up a nice stretch. Three, it's going to grab it even more. Four. And finally, five. See that? If I play around with my settings, my graph settings, my slider settings, and my zoom in, zoom out feature, I get to see the full effect on this graph. Nice. Good. We've done other transformations. K. Yep. Our K is a compression or stretch vertically along the x-axis. We've seen this. We've talked about this earlier in class, back in grade 11. But Desmos lets us see it so clearly and nicely. It, it's, it's a wonder we haven't used this before and, and, and certainly enjoy and you can see visually what, what it is we have to work on. What about the next one? How about minus C? Yep. Okay. The C transformation, okay. The slider is a vertical translation, left or right. Okay. Let me set this to one. Set this to one, and let's fiddle around with this K transformation. Okay, and go let's go let's let's do it this way. Let's go pi, negative pi, to two pi, and let's go step. And I can move my values here. Move that around. And finally, let's do our last and final one. D. Absolutely, we want to add a slider. We want all three or four of our transformations to be sliders. And the D we know moves it up and down. So using Desmos, I can graph hundreds, literally hundreds of these transformations and these trig functions. I could change the trig functions to cos or tan. I can adjust all these transformations and get all kinds of great conclusions, visuals, all kinds of great transformations, seeing the effect that each of the four transformations have on my basic trig functions. Okay. Desmos, as I've said all along here, love, love this feature of Desmos and and certainly, uh, it, it, it's great 
to to let me see visually how these graphs are affected by IR4 transformations.